Last winter, we made a video about high-efficiency furnaces and some of the nuances that many people don't consider. And recently, a subscriber responded with an important point that was missed, which I wanted to point out. So in this video, we're going to talk about some of the hidden costs of high-efficiency furnaces. And at the end of the video, there'll be a link to another video about one of our favorite high-efficiency systems, but more on that later. Now, I'll read the comment first so you have context. And on that note, if you have a question or feedback about your specific situation that you'd like covered in a video, post it in the comment section below. We're actually going to start doing a call-in type of podcast where we can provide feedback over the phone in order to create dialogue around the topics that you're the most interested in. So if you're interested in potentially being a part of that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel to stay up to date when we start releasing those episodes as well as information on how to call into one of our podcast episodes. Now the comment is somewhat long, but I'm going to read the whole thing because it's also a firsthand experience. Subscriber Thomas wrote, nice video, but I wish you would have also included in your cost analysis the lifetime cost of service and maintenance into the equation. The newer high efficiency furnaces have ECM blower motors, which are three to four times the replacement cost of a PCM, and I think he meant PSC, motor, which are found on the slightly less efficient furnaces. The induction motor, another motor on the furnace, alone on my carrier Weathermaker Infinity Furnace is close to $2,000 to replace. It went out in the first three years of my furnace warranty and fortunately it was covered under warranty. However, my ECM motor went out after 12 years and I had to eat the cost of a new $1,800 replacement motor. Don't even get me started on the special computer board that is needed on these high efficiency furnaces. This board also went out but was covered under my warranty. Paid extra money for 10 years of coverage. Now normal coverage for parts was three years only. You also have a special thermostat that will cost anywhere from $500 to $1,000 extra. All of these costs that you did not discuss are the true hidden costs of owning a high efficiency furnace. Yes, you get 98% efficiency and save on the amount of gas used, but why not settle for 80 to 90% efficiency and pay almost half the price for a furnace which will last just as long, 18 to 25 years as the industry av, assuming that means average for all furnaces. If I have a choice in the future, I will never again opt in for the high efficiency model over the simpler, less efficient one. Trust me, over the 20 years you own it, you will save thousands of dollars over that high efficiency model and the cost of service and maintenance. But if your conscience won't allow you to burn that extra 10% in gas, then better burn some of your dollars on that high efficiency model to soothe your conscience. Now, first off, Thomas, thank you for taking the time to post a comment. It is much appreciated. And I absolutely love this comment because it points out the hidden costs of high efficiency furnaces, which we'll cover in this video. And it also alludes to something that you might not have known was coming. And that is whether or not you'll even have a choice in the matter but more on that in a moment. Now the statement in this comment is that when it comes to a high efficiency furnace, the extra cost of maintaining the furnace in addition to the upfront increased cost of purchasing a high efficiency furnace outweigh any savings benefits, making the possibility of saving money with a 97% efficient furnace a mute point. And part of the reason I love this comment so much is because I agree with it in certain circumstances, but let's build out an actual scenario so you can see what we're talking about. Oftentimes I get people that are interested in spending spending the extra money to get a high efficiency furnace for their home because they've been talked into it thinking that they're going to save a bunch of money. But the truth is that the most you can save is about 20% off of your gas bill. And this is because that is the actual maximum savings you can truly get when comparing an 80% efficient system to a high efficiency 96 or 98% efficient system. And this is because all that's happening in a high efficiency furnace is that more heat energy is being extracted from the furnace during the combustion process and being transferred to the living space. So if you are spending $400 a month, for example, on natural gas in the middle of the winter, then the most you would be saving with a high efficiency furnace is $60 or $80 a month maybe in theory. Let's talk about why this matters. And in order to do that, we'll talk about how high efficiency furnaces work so you understand the difference. Now a standard 80% efficient furnace functions with only one heat exchanger, whereas a high efficiency furnace has two heat exchangers. And in layman's terms, what this means is the heat exchangers are essentially the tubes that the fire is burning inside of during the combustion process. And this is what is connected to your exhaust. And when the furnace is running, the blower motor circulates air inside your home and through your ductwork and this blows air across the heat exchanger pulling heat off of the heat exchanger and circulating that heat throughout the ductwork in your home. 
And the concept is similar to how old cars used to function where you would heat the cabin of the car from heat coming off of the exhaust or the cylinder block when the engine was running. Now, the difference between a high efficiency and an 80% efficient furnace is that a high efficiency furnace has what's called a secondary heat exchanger. And the secondary heat exchanger is where the exhaust gases make their final pass before being exhausted out the exhaust flue. Now, part of the added expense in installing a new high efficiency furnace when you're replacing an existing 80% efficiency furnace is that you have to run a new exhaust because high efficiency furnaces must be vented through PVC because if you had a metal exhaust, it would rust out from all the moisture in a high efficiency furnace exhaust. It's much more moist. And one of the things that this comment touched on was ECM versus PSC motors. And although it's true that PSC motors are cheaper, it's actually a mute point because now even a basic single stage 80% efficient furnace is required to have an ECM motor. And it's been that way since 2019. However, on the higher end, high efficiency systems, a variable speed motor is still much more expensive than a standard ECM. So if you're just wanting a basic model without all the bells and whistles, the simplest 80% efficient system will still have an ECM motor, but it will only be slightly more expensive for the part when compared to the old and now non-available PSC motors. But the point made is true and it's something that we make sure to point out to our customers because although a high efficiency furnace will save you money in the long run because of inflation as it relates to the price of natural gas, we tell people a conservative break-even period, and I mean conservative, is 10 years and sometimes it can be longer in Colorado depending on the size of the gas bill. And this is also why anytime we have people in Colorado that are dead set on high efficiency but aren't aware that they're actually more expensive to repair and have a longer break even period in our climate. We always mention dual fuel heat pumps as an option because it gives customers the best of both worlds. And this is especially true in Colorado because a lot of our customers have solar panels to offset the heat pump usage. And from a cost offset perspective, this becomes a no brainer if you're going to be in the home for at least seven to 10 years. And the main reason we sell a lot of the higher end equipment comes down to comfort choices because the systems are quieter when they're running and people enjoy and purchase them for this reason, regardless of the savings or lack thereof. But if you're in a cold climate, and I mean a very cold climate like Canada, for example, this isn't necessarily true. And right now there is a massive decarbonization movement in Canada. And in Canada, high efficiency furnaces are mandated. So it's not even an option to get a standard 80% efficient model. And as of a recent bill that was passed in 2022, three years from now, it will be a requirement that all new furnaces in Colorado will also have to be high efficiencies. So we won't have an option for an 80% here anymore either. This is specific to a piece of legislation uh, for Colorado, as far as I know, but given the current trend, I wouldn't be surprised if something like this was passed federally. Now, the bottom line is that in cold climates, you will see more of a savings because it costs more to run, runs longer, and has a longer heating season to recuperate these costs. And it's also for the same reason that another scenario where we recommend high efficiency systems is when people are off the grid and they are heating on propane. The reason reason is because propane is very expensive by comparison to natural gas and this added expense almost always shortens the break-even period substantially. Now if after watching this you're disappointed at the prospect that you may be mandated to buy a high efficiency furnace in coming years, the good news is that there are base models or single stage high efficiency furnaces that will save you money on the upfront cost as well as repair costs compared to the higher end modulating systems. So if you're not excited about an expensive modulating gas valve repair in the future, just so you can have a quieter furnace, then you'll still be in luck with a few base model options to choose from, even when high efficiency furnaces become mandated. Now this law will take effect in 2026 in Colorado. So if you're wanting to buy an 80% efficient furnace in Colorado, now is a good time to do it. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver, Colorado or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. That's right, we come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now. One is about dual fuel systems, which talks about heat pumps and furnace combos. And the other is a link to one of our favorite high-end, uh, high-efficiency furnaces, the modulating DM97MC.